Hi everyone, it's Jen again. This week I was working on implementing the next boss fight. So there's really only like two big bosses in this game. And you can see I was kind of testing the sprites and the sizing and the positioning was not the way that I wanted it to be. Um, <laughs> this sprite gave me a lot of headaches uh, because it has so many different layers and I have to implement them differently than I do kind of the rest of the character sprites um, that are the normal uh, character units and the beast units. Um, that system has a, kind of like an automatic positioning in place and all the sprites are standardized into the same boxes so I really just have to make the artwork, animate it, export it as X number of frames and um, then it just kind of just drop the assets in a folder and um, create the objects in the programming and then everything just kind of falls in place as far as having them display during combat um, in the correct way. So one of the uh, questions that I got last week was about um, naming files. So I thought this was kind of relevant while I was <laughs> struggling through uh, implementing this boss sprite. Um, I felt that Going back to kind of talk about how I name or organize my files um, has a lot to do with how they are implemented in the game and ease of use. So once I started using like F strings, thank you um, E5 for showing me how to do that because that has saved me so many lines of code and has really helped me organize my scripts like uh, and add more special effects to um, some of the stuff like the dice that uh, kind of sort of kind of got overwhelming before. Um, just having cleaner and more efficient code just kind of um, gave me more room to kind of expand uh, when things were already getting kind of crowded and confusing. So here I have a screenshot of just how my project folder like generally looks. I know you can't really see all the files there, but in the main game directory, I have a bunch of folders where I try to keep same systems kind of in the same folders so we have like mission uh, files mission folders that are have um, like dungeons and bosses and um, maps that are unique to that particular mission um, we have general menu systems that are shared across the game we've got images that are shared across the game and those images are broken down into like battle sprites and bonding sprites and skill trigger animations uh, and backgrounds that sort of thing so just trying to keep like-minded things together and it does actually like make sense other than just being able to like go through your project folder and find what you're looking for. Um, it kind of makes sense too when it comes to using those F strings to um, basically have displayables that are going to be like variable. So like in my game I've got a general combat system that there's going to be um, randomized enemies and there's going to be player selected units that are going to vary and so I needed to have like scripts that I could I needed a method to be able to have those sprites display um, without like directly commanding display this image name in this directory so First, we started by creating these object classes where we assigned different properties to every single like unit and uh, monster. And in those properties, we also have like a nickname property. So this nickname is a string that I name all the image files after. So like all the attack animation sprites for the battle sprites have like the nickname of the character that underscore attack. So that way I can make it an F string where that nickname is gonna be determined at the start of battle once we've determined the enemy randomized units and the player selected units. It's gonna do a get attribute to find the nickname and then it's going to 
use that nickname in an F string to know which sprite to display. Um, <laughs> I feel like that sounds a little bit more complicated than um, maybe for people who are just starting in RenPy. Um, I am not a programmer again, and I, I always feel very awkward like trying to talk about programming because I'm just kind of figuring out things as I go, and I don't always even know the precise logic as to why I'm doing things that like work. A lot of what I do is just like trial and error, and um, when I get suggestions that I can kind of try to implement um, that other people have made to me, but I don't always fully grasp what I'm even being instructed to do. <laughs> and sometimes it takes me like multiple projects and like, I don't know, years of working with these files and stuff to like really understand the full depth. If, or even, I don't even know if I understand the full depth, but at least grasp what I can do with it to like kind of come up with my own methods of working with these things. So this is like an example of a script that runs after you've confirmed your deployment selection. It is determining what unit was selected to be in the front position. That's what that G front is, guild front, um, the guild mid position and the guild rear position. So it's getting the attribute of the nick um, name of the character. So th that is what we're, the string that we're going to use to populate our idle animation sprite, our battle, our attack animation sprite, and our flinching animation sprite, as well as like the name for when they're being used in like combat dialogue, as well as the dice, um, so it knows which dice to roll, the element and faction, so it can determine those bonuses, um, as well as the hit point that it's going to add to the pool, the rank and the bond, and um, those are used for um, gaining loyalty and leveling up the bond with the characters. So. Oh gosh. <laughs> so yeah, after you use that get attribute, um, you can use that variable, that like that container, that temporary container that we're kind of using, um, to drop in the F string for the um, sprite display on a screen. So these combat sprites are not using like the RenPy sprite system. They are a programmed screen. Um, and I have both like the guild characters on a screen and the enemy characters on a screen. And the bosses are a bit different because they have so many parts that are unique to them. Um, but you can see here in the else statement how like the enemy front um, if it's a beast that's frenzied, they're going to have a version of their sprite with like the, um, the outline. Um, and if not, then they're going to have just like their regular uh, version of their sprite. Um, and you can see like there's that underscore idle. So that's how all of my animation sequences were programmed with like that same naming convention that they're going to be called like enemy sprite underscore then their nickname and then underscore um, idle or underscore attack or underscore flinch. And then I have their position there um, on the screen. So like um, depending if they're in the front, the middle or the rear of the screen. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I was getting so frustrated because I was trying to rescale all of these um, these sprites, but then I had to kind of deform them in different ways to kind of make it so the artwork didn't clip in weird spots. Uh, I had to shift around a lot of stuff, so... Oh gosh, I was spending like hours trying to replace all the, um, the sprites with like the rescaled sprites because originally all the artwork was too large, even though I knew what scale I was working at. Um, I guess I was just a little overly ambitious that I thought that Kraken was going to be this huge monster that was going to take up half the screen and then when I actually saw it on the screen I thought it looked terrible because you couldn't see everything that you need to see for like the dice and the, um, the, the health points and the bonuses and um, the 
card art and all, all the other elements. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't just have this one um, enemy mob like take up an entire half a screen, like from top to bottom. <laughs> so that was a lot of that. Oh, this is just showing the dice too, how the dice display. So when um, the element is being found, um, all the different dice are also named after like their element and their dice number so you can see those um, f string there kind of telling us which dice to display we're going to be displaying like the front is uh, i think michaela so he's a green and his uh, dice is four so it's going to be a four-sided green dice um, and then it's going to spin uh, when it rolls so that's what that transform is and I also ended up adding those effects where if they get a double bonus or a triple bonus, they get little sparklies and the outline. Just to emphasize which, which characters got the bonus, um, because before I added that effect, it was kind of hard to tell who was getting the bonus. And I think I wanted to try to display as much information visually without having to read all the combat text because, um, yeah, the combat text is just kind of easy to gloss over and not pay attention to. Oh, I'm using this website to convert all my um, PNGs to WebMs. Uh, there's a lot of free websites out there, but a lot of them have kind of limitations, like how many of them you can convert a day or something like that. So I found this one particular one and I will link it in the description below so that you too can <laughs> make your PNGs much smaller to WebMs if you use programs that don't naturally natively export to WebM. Okay, let's move on to... So this is a playtest of my first phase one of the Kraken battle on the crown side. And um, the first phase is kind of an HP sponge, Let's roll. but the player is at a disadvantage Please, at their dice over. totals against the Kra uh, Kraken. Okay. So my strategy going into this is going to be save up enough to use Moore's Empower skill and um, then just use morale boost every other turn and hope that Michaelis's shield protects me during the times where it's down. Allow me to assist. I think that the scaled down uh, Kraken looks better as far as not overcrowding the screen, um, with the line weight not being too heavy to make it look like it's in the foreground or something, and uh, hopefully it's still menacing enough looking. Skill triggering. Skill triggering. Double bonus. Skill triggering. Sweet release. Thanks for watching. Oh, I hope lucky. you found this helpful and enjoy your upcoming week. As always, don't forget to enjoy the process. This is Bye all now. Thanks to your blessings.